for the guys on Android, just go to the settings and in the set in the search, look for NFC. There you can turn this off. If you don't have the search option in your phone, then just look for a wireless option. You know, it's usually on the first two, uh, top two or top three. Look for wireless and network or maybe Bluetooth and device connection, like in my case. And there you'll find NFC. So that's how you can turn it off. That's actually it for the video. I'm actually done for today. If you want to find out what NFC is about and why this is draining your battery, then let me paint you a picture of words. But bro, you have graphics in shit. Let me paint you a picture of graphics. Have you wondered why Bluetooth pairing takes forever? First of all, why do we even have this pairing process? Can't you just enter a password like Wi-Fi and call it a day? The reason we have this painful pairing process with Bluetooth is because once your phone trusts another device over a wireless network, then the trusted device can access all your informa information from your phone. Information like your photos, your private messages, your contacts and so on. So that's why there's this painful pairing process. It's ra it would rather not work than to work and give all of your information away. And that's the problem that NFC tries to solve, you know. So, thank you. NFC stands for Near Field Communication. It's actually this antenna that's there on the behind of your phone. This antenna acts as you providing consent for whatever action that you're undertaking when you tap your phone against something. If you guys heard of RFID, radio frequency identification before, then NFC solves the exact same problem with another technology. The reason that it kills battery is because the circuit for this antenna is always turned on and it's always ready to provide authentication just by tapping. That's why you're losing battery, you know? So NFC in a sense does not send data, but it only acts as that authentication gateway. The app actually decides how it wants to send it. For example, Android Beam uses Bluetooth Samsung Beam used to use NFC, but with Wi-Fi Direct. Once you tap your phone with another Samsung device, then it sends the data with uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. It creates a hotspot and the other phone connects. All that painful process happens when you just tap. So it doesn't take care of the sending. It only takes care of the authentication. Folks on the iPhone side don't have to worry about turning this on and off because you can't do it. <laughs> you can't use NFC for any kind of authentication on iPhone apart from the Apple Pay. So when you open the Apple Pay app, it turns on NFC and once you close the app, it turns it off. It's little smart things like this that makes the iPhone so much more efficient than any other Android phone, you know. In Android, you have all these options and some people don't even know what they do. But on the iPhone, you don't have these options. You can share via Dropbox or iCloud or for Google Photos if you want, but you can't do that with NFC and rightfully so, it's not that good for file sharing, you know. Even if you turn on the Wi-Fi hotspot and share it via Share It, the app Share It, I don't think that's such a good option. I think it's better to, because just think about this. How many phones have you owned in the past? Do you actually have all the photos that you received via Bluetooth these three, four years? Not me, <laughs> but I have the photos that I received by Dropbox and by Google Photos. And that just leaves a good copy, a robust, reliable copy on the cloud or I have another copy on my hard disk drive for personal photos, which I share with my family through hard disk drive. One second, I'll just see if I pointed everything out. That's it for this video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, keep learning.